Hi, everyone. This is Caroline again with you, Expat Interviews, Thriving Abroad, where I get an opportunity to speak with expats that are thriving all over the globe. And today I am going to share a little bit of the life of Miss Fab and Fabulous Fun Jasmine, who is uh, living here in Mexico on the other side of the coast. Welcome, Miss Jasmine. So nice to have you. Uh, share with us today. So let's get into uh, your story. You are originally from? I'm originally from Atlanta. Atlanta is home. ATL um, in the house. Okay. All right. <laughs> Atlanta. Born in Miami. Um, spending all of my adult life in Atlanta. And I'm just like, you know, time for, time for change. <laughs> Definitely time for a change. But so that's had my you had you traveled before outside of the country before you left? Oh yeah, um, I've been traveling since college. Uh, in undergrad, I did exchange programs in Ghana. I've actually been there three times. I did a HBCU travel experience to China where I got to spend a um, few weeks there. And then after college, I became an au pair and I moved to Manchester where I got to travel through Europe. So I did that for about four or five months. I came home. And I became a flight attendant and continue my travels from there. Um, but I think when I got my job as a flight attendant, I was trying to please everybody and myself. So it was an opportunity for me to travel like I wanted to, but also like keep my mom and my dad quiet about, oh, get a real job, you know, be like an adult and settle down and all that. So. I thought I was pleasing everyone by doing that job, but oh my gosh, it was so demanding. I was always tired. I was burnt out and I never really made time to travel personally, like just leisurely and experience things on my own time because I was tired of being in the air all the time. And I realized like, this isn't working. I'm doing everything for everybody. I want to do for myself. Jasmine, what do you like? What do you want to do? Like, how do you want to travel? So after I quit, I think it took me about another year to really have the courage to get up and go do what I wanted to do for me. Like COVID hit and it allowed me an opportunity to really reflect. Jacqueline, what do you want in life? Like, what are you doing now that doesn't suit you and how can you change it? So I started thinking about ways of um, changing my circumstances. I was engaged. I was in a three year long relationship and I wasn't happy. I was working, um, after I quit my flight in the job, I was working as a residence director for a college. I wasn't happy, you know, I didn't see growth. And I'm like, why am I working a job I don't like? Why am I in a relationship I don't like? Why am I doing this? So I just said, I'm gonna quit. And I literally, I dropped everything. I dropped the relationship, I dropped the job and I moved to Mexico. That's what I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna write full time, I'm a writer. <laughs> I'm a freelance writer. So I said, I'm gonna write full time. I want a career of this. This is my passion. I love to travel and I like to share my story. So how can I do that? Mexico at the time was an opportunity where they didn't have strict rules. I knew uh, when it comes to COVID anyway, I knew I could get in without a lot of um, you know, issues. And I knew my money would go a lot further. So I took everything that I had saved up I came to Mexico, I paid all my bills up for the next six months. So I'm really just living and thriving freely. I am in a creative space where I can write as much as I like. I can take time to just reflect on me. I can spend a day at the beach. You know, I can go down the Fifth Avenue and have drinks and people watch. And I am in such a better place now, in such a better place. I think the stress of it all came from and cut me off anytime if I'm just talking too much. <laughs> Let me know like if you need to jump in with a question. But well, um, no, I, 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 I'm just in awe of what you're saying. I, I wanted to just say that you, your story, you're telling the story of hundreds and hundreds of people, uh, you know, especially during COVID, I think so many people just mm -hmm. discovered what you just said. That's an incredible story. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think coming here, when I tell you, gave me so much relief, so much relief. Because when I think about back home 
and why I hung on to the relationship for so long, why I hung on to the job for so long, while I was trying to please everybody for so long because I was afraid of the unknown. I'm like, what would happen if I really lose this, leave this man? Like, you know, I'm about to be married. I'm about to be married. Like, we're women. We all want to be married. We want to be loved. We want to have that uh, fulfilling, I don't know, um, happily ever after type feel. And I'm like, I'm about to give that up. But to be honest, like it didn't feel so happy. I didn't see the future being bright. I didn't see um, my life with this man as something that what, what was going to make me happy, basically. So having the courage to say, I'm gonna let you go. You know, I'm gonna, this is a sure thing. I'm comfortable here, you know, it's what I know, but I'm gonna let you go and I'm gonna walk into the unknown because the reality is just cause I don't know what's out there doesn't mean that it's not good for me. It doesn't mean that I'm not gonna thrive. It doesn't mean that I'm not gonna find another man, you know, at some point who is better suited for me and my needs and what I want in life and can walk this journey of life with me. So I think the fear is what held me back for so long because I've always wanted to do this. I've now, always wanted to do this. <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. Did you have, I mean, cause you made a big decision. Um, friends, family, I mean, for consultations, I, I mean, did you get motivation, encouragement? Did people doubt you? Did they think you were crazy? Um, did Definitely. they want you to have your head examined? <laughs> what, what was that Absolutely. like? All of that. I mean, I've had encouraging people and I also had those that just didn't believe. But I think when people are trying to tell you differently, like, oh, you should reconsider. Oh, you shouldn't do that. Oh, that's crazy. Mexico's dangerous. Why would you go out there? Number one, these people have never experienced what you experienced. They, God did not bless them with your vision. They don't have your understanding. They can't see the world the way that you see the world. So if you listen to them, you're only, you're only allowing them to limit you for what you know is right in your heart. So for me, I, I was strong in that. I'm like, I listen to people all of my life. I've done what other people told me to do all of my life. At this point, I'm not going to let that influence my decisions anymore. So my family, they know me to just pack up and travel somewhere. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be an au pair. You know, I'm gonna go to Ghana, Ghana this whatever this summer, or I'm moving however I wanna move. And so they're kind of used to it, although they want me to be more stable and things. But at this point, it's like, I know that's what you want. You can express it all day long. I'm going to do what I want to do. So they kind of fall in line. My mom is definitely supportive. My father's still like, I'm waiting for you to settle down and take life seriously. But I'm like, this is life for me. And I'm very serious about it. I'm very serious about it. But, you know, he, he's um, in the baby boomer generation. So he doesn't see, uh, I guess, fulfillment, you know, following your passion, fulfilling the desires of your heart, that doesn't mean anything to him, right? And his understanding, I guess, is when you retire, then you do all that stuff. After you work 20, 30 years, then you get to do that. But I'm like, no, I, I see things a little bit differently. And I'm glad that I was courageous enough to go and do what I wanted to do for me. As for my job, um, a lot of my friends at my job, like I, I met some wonderful people at my last job, which lifelong companions that I think have really helped me get to this point. And some, however, were like, oh, so you're going to Mexico? You're quitting to go to Mexico. Okay, um, good luck with that, you know? And it's, it's discouraging, it's so discouraging. It's like, I don't even like to share my story because it's people like you who are gonna say things like that and just get under my skin. Like, I just want positivity because I know I'm doing this and I just wanna keep going forward. So it's kind of just walking away from those people. Or I just started saying like, oh no, I just want to do something different. Oh, I'm going to figure it out. Oh, I'm just going to take up writing full time. Or oh, I don't even have any plans at all. I was just telling, telling people that because they don't need to know my story. If they aren't in a position to where they believe in me or they want to encourage me or inspire me to do what I want to do, there's no point in me sharing. <laughs> I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that, um, you know, you have a lot of courage that people don't see in themselves. Uh, because as you were saying that, I, I recall when I left the United States, like this was 13 years ago, I remember telling one of my bosses, because I was working 400 jobs at the time, but I told him, uh, you know, I'm moving to Costa Rica. And he said, must be nice. You know, that was his reaction. And I was, I thought, wow, you know, I thought he'd say, wow, he'd be excited for me. But, uh, you know, in af afterthought, I think that many people are just like, 
you know, what the heck, how can, you know, I could never do that. So I guess it's like a defense thing, like, oh, well, whatever, you know, but that, that's really intriguing and so exciting to hear your story. So were you, do you consider yourself a writer always, or is this something that you just kind of evolved into? I believe I've always been a writer. I got my degree in mass communications and I concentrated in public relations. And that just like jump started my, oh my God, like I could do this as a living. Um, I know when I was younger, I used to keep diaries and things. So it kind of faded off because, you know, your family go into your, your room and they read your diary and they're like, oh, what are you saying? To you? you know, so I kind of stopped writing and I put it off until college and it kind of reignited that flame of, oh, I really love doing this. And then as I went through life and I got in certain relationships, I kind of stopped writing again. And I see myself being unhappy because that's my outlet. That's how I express how I feel. That's where I can freely be me and tell my story, but the life I was living, I didn't want to talk about it. I wasn't happy with it. And I'm like, I don't want to go back and read this. I'm so upset where I'm at currently that I'm not going to write because I don't want to go back to this and relive any of these things that I'm experiencing. And so, and it's been years, oh my God, I haven't written for years, for years. And to come back to it and it just flows. Oh my goodness, it just flows. Like to not have to go to work, to not have to wake up and be like, oh, I got something to do in the morning and I gotta get this done and that done and that done. And hopefully by all of it, by the time all of it's over, I have enough time to do the things I wanna do for me, even though I know I'm just gonna be exhausted. And I'm not even gonna bother to do the things that I say I wanted to do for myself because I put all of my energy into somebody else. And now it's like, I'm waking up, I'm going to the pool. I'm gonna bring my laptop out. And I'm you know, <laughs> coming down, I'm actually about to put out my blog. I have been writing my memoirs since I'm here. I am just jumping in full force. I recently decided to do a YouTube video, I mean, a YouTube channel. So I'm working on that. And it's just, I have free creative control and time to just put these things out here. Because I do believe, and I keep being, I'm going keep I'm constantly told <laughs> that I have a story to tell. It's like, oh, my mom, especially, she's really encouraging me to like, put yourself out there, Jasmine. People can relate. They've been through it. You're not the only one going through it, you know? Um, and if you put yourself out there and share your story, you'll be surprised at how many people it touches, how many people it can inspire. Absolutely, and absolutely. You're right. And I battled with transparency for the longest time because I was afraid that people would disapprove of what I'm saying, not agree. And, you know, um, comment sections can be brutal. And I just didn't think I was strong enough to endure what negative people had to say. But I'm realizing now that you're yeah, walking your own strength. You are this incredible, resilient person who has overcome things that people could not even imagine putting themselves into. So what's a comment? You know, if someone says something negative, oh, well, I think it's me just getting over that. Oh, I have to please people. Like I've always been a people pleaser. So I'm getting over that and being more um, selfish. Like this is what I want to do for me. And it's okay to do what I want to do for me. Even if other people don't like it, like my mental health is important. My emotional health is important. And if it does not serve me, if it does not make me happy, it's okay for me to say, you know what? I'm backing up. <laughs> I'm good on that. I just need my own space and I'm going to speak freely um, and just be myself. Wow. <laughs> These are very powerful words that you that you speak. And, and for being a young person, I feel like we need to duplicate this and triplicate this, uh, you know, put it out there for, because I'm sure so many uh, women, especially, are feeling your feelings have been through what you've been through, and I, and it's so important that we um, you know we understand the core of you know things that make us unhappy you know why and 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 I'm a big proponent of don't you know leave your birthplace to go somewhere because you're running away you know because right. wherever you go there you are you want to go to have what you just described peace and tranquility and just live your best life you know that should be your reason for leaving right. to go abroad how has mexico been for you jasmine how do you how do you like it there oh my goodness i love it here like i chose playa um 
mainly because I saw the black community thriving here. I'm in the Facebook groups before I came. I was in the Facebook groups and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I see Playa just keep popping up. They're doing this, they're having this get together. They're having this link up over here. Like they're uplifting each other. They're inspiring each other. I wanna be a part of that. So I get here and I throw myself in a mix. I go to some of those mixers. I go to some of those link ups um, and everyone I meet has touched me in a way. I'm like, wow, you know, like your story is inspiring and your story is inspiring. And oh my God, like you're just this awesome, creative, confident person. I want to be more like you. Let's hang out. And I'm just I'm surrounding myself with so much positive energy, positive people that is rubbing off on me. And I'm like smiling every day and I'm glowing and I'm just in my best like zone right now. And I'm really thankful. You're in the zone. <laughs> I'm in the zone, like I'm completely in the zone and I'm just so thankful for the people that I meet. And it's just as simple as someone making a comment um, on your Facebook post or you commenting on someone, else, someone else's um, Facebook post. Next thing you know, you're in each other's DMs and you're like, hey, what are you doing? I, I have, wanna have dinner at six o'clock? And it left last night is a perfect example. Um, a young lady saw one of my posts on uh, the, I believe it's, Black and Cancun and Tulum, Black Cancun, Tulum, Playa, Facebook group, something like that. I'm sorry. I'm not sure exactly the name of it, but it's a Black Mexico group on Facebook. She saw my post. She reached out to me to say, hey, I'm new here. Um, I'm about three days in. Would you like to link up? And I'm like, sure. I'm always open because I was new at one point and I wanted someone to reach out to me and I was seeking friendships and connections all kind of ways. So I was like, absolutely. And so we went to a restaurant right around the corner, public place, had drinks, had wings, had great conversation. She was a beautiful soul. Oh my gosh. I just was like, it's crazy how we connected. It's just so crazy. Cause it's someone like you, I needed to have this conversation. I needed this girl's time. I needed some of the um, words of wisdom that you've spoken to me. And I'm just accepting every connection that I make with someone, it's intentional. I believe that it was divine, it was supposed to happen. I was connected with this person in this way for a reason because everyone I leave, I have a lesson or some type of newfound motivation. And I, I don't know, but Playa has been a blessing to me. I hope that it's everyone else that comes here feels the same way. Cause everyone has different experiences, but it definitely has hit home for me and I'm just, I'm blessed. I'm truly blessed. And I'm so thankful to be here because my life now is so different from the life I left at home. Do you see yourself living in Mexico long term? Is that something you'd like to or do you would you like to be like a little nomad? <laughs> little nomad I, action in the future? I wanted to be a nomad. Like I always like, oh, I'm going to try to be a nomad. I'm going to try to be a Black expat. I'm going to I'm gonna try this thing out. So now I'm here. I said I was gonna be here at minimum six months. I'm gonna do it a whole six months and see how I thrive. Now, if my writing kicks off or my uh, YouTube channel kicks off in the right way, then yeah, you know, if I'm making some more money, then I'll definitely stay here. I will definitely stay here, travel around Mexico, travel to South America, you know, go to the Caribbean and even make my way um, back to Europe because there's still some places that I haven't been to that I want to experience. But I can see myself having Playa as my home base while I just travel everywhere else. Because the cost of living here, oh my gosh, it's so affordable. So it's nothing for me like at home where you're paying like $1,200 in rent plus utilities and all other things here, I pay less than $400 in my rent. Like when my utilities included, and even some of my at-home bills, I'm barely touching 500, barely touching 500 a month. So for me, it's just like, wow, this is how I want to be. I'm not stressed over paying bills. I come and go as I please. I'm comfortable. I don't have to compromise. Like just me being happy for me having to work and make this money to pay these bills. So I definitely can see me being in Mexico for a good amount of time. <laughs> Well, that's, that's really nice. It is a, a really beautiful, magical place. I have to say if, you know, for those that have never had the experience, this really is a special place. 
um, especially if you want to get out and experience another culture um, mm -hmm. near to the U.S. So um, you, everything that you've said the last 20 minutes has been so inspirational, but any, any last bit of advice for someone? And, and you, again, you've touched on so many important things that I think so many people, women and men alike, you know, are just at a turning point in their life. Any last words of advice for someone who's in that situation that you found yourself in? Um, it's cliche, but the saying of, if you can dream it, you can do it. It's so true. It is so true. If you have the idea, because everything starts with an idea. If you have the idea and it's something that you're interested in, look into it, see how you can make it possible. Because I guarantee you there's somebody with even worse circumstances than you is out here making it happen. So never feel like the walls are closing in or it's just too much against you or you have too much going on. There is a way. If you want it bad enough, figure it out. Message me. I can have you probably have some tips to give you. Um, if all you need is someone to give you accountability, like an accountability partner or someone to encourage you, seek out those people in your life. You know who to trust. Your discernment will tell you, like, this is good company. This person can help me get to where I want to be. Like, use that, follow that, and live out the desires of your heart unapologetically. <laughs> I love it. And for someone who feels touched and would like to reach out to you, how can we get a hold of you? Oh, I am on Instagram underscore I am Jay Wade. Um, yeah, that's the best. That's the best place. <laughs> I'm always there. So just ding my DM and and your YouTube you. channel, or is it up and running? Or it has, it's not up and running. Okay. They're all things. That work <laughs> okay okay hopefully you will have much success with that we'll do um we'll put a, a link in there uh in the future once you uh, uh once you have it so folks can connect with you you have been a ball of motivation uh it, it's just been amazing just listening to you I, I would listen to you for hours you're gonna have to add motivational speaker to many of to your talents um for the future <laughs> Uh, you're, you're, you're a breath of sunshine. And I hope that um, those that are watching will feel your energy and your enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. And if they're sitting on the fence, they're gonna feel that yes, they too can, can make it. Jasmine, thank you so much for sharing your story. It has been incredible. And uh, we'll have to follow up with you again in the future. Awesome, thank you for having me. My pleasure. Thanks.